guys, 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 I'm far from a musical expert, but my toddler was watching one of those uh, kids song compilations and they did that skid a marinky dinky dink song and they didn't put it wasn't right. Like, it's just a kid song, but that song introduced me to the beauty of like diminished chords and stuff when I was a kid and I didn't even know it. I just knew it sounded nice. The way they were playing it on the kids song was like skid a marinky dinky dink skid a marinky do I love you. You know, and then the last time it went just the same. I love you. Da, 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 da. That was the end. I was like, what are you doing? You're robbing my toddler of these leading tones that make the song great. So they play it. Skin rink, dink, dink, skin rink, dink. It sounds right-ish if you don't know the difference. But listen to this. And it, I, again, I'm not a good musician. This is my, my interpretation. I don't know that this is how Sharon, Lois, and Bram played it. Skin rink, dink, skin rink, dink. I love you. And that's not the important part. Right? We love you in the morning and in the afternoon. We love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Blah, blah, blah. This part's all. Now, listen, this is the part I was trying to tell you guys about. Skid a rinky dinky dink. Skid a rinky do. I love you. But you see what I'm saying? There's none of that in the, like, Coco Melon crap. We've had, what, 40 years almost to figure out how to do this right? Kids, if you're making music, those early songs of the Beatles that dumb people tell you aren't cool, they weren't cool until they started using drugs, that's where they learned to write songs, guys. And there's chords in there that'll change your life. And you get yourself a book of Beatles chords, and you learn it. And then you'll be like, oh! And it's like music majors sit around, they didn't know they called the F ad nine. F with the, the G note on the top string. They knew how to use them, bro. And you're sitting there looking at a book, reading out what it's called. They figured it out on their own because it sounded nice. Playing numbers out of a book and saying, this is this chord or this is this chord. If you don't know how to make a song, I can't play it right. I sound like crap, but I know how to do it. And if you want to know how to make them to... Now you can just arrange it all on a screen if you don't know how to play. Like if you have clunky fingers like me, but you got the diminished chord in your soul and you want to get it out, you can do that now. But if you don't know what the fuck that is, you're going to be like, why does my music not have any passion or vitality? And I'm telling you, it's because all those boring songs the Beatles made before they did drugs are full of the answers that you seek. You need to uh, learn these things and it takes time. The hardest math problem I ever solved in my life was the song I wrote when I was 19. And for a month, I knew the melody in my head and I knew it was going to be a total. I don't know about chords. It took me like, I was like an hour of just playing everything I possibly could. And that's part of it, man. If you're writing, if you're composing, if you aren't experimenting with you like, well, this is this scale and you never play anything out of it and you think that's all there is, then they've stuffed you in a box, man. I learned scales by playing along with songs and I realized I was always playing the same notes. And then, of course, I went in and studied what it was. The framework helps you make sense of it. It's like something to grab when you're in the middle of the ocean of music, which is an ocean made of art. It's not an ocean made of numbers. It's not a chemical reaction. There's no predetermined outcome. And somebody who doesn't know anything about music can make a better song than you. And someone who understands all these chords to make a way better song than you. Like, if you're sitting around and be like, look at the runs this guy does. Like, look at the 30-second notes. That's cool, and there's a place for that. But I will never listen to that kind of music. I would rather hear someone chunking away poorly with some beautiful song that came from their heart, man. I'm sorry, but if your heart doesn't have... And I'm not trying to be a snob. I'm saying, look at this. Listen to that. It makes you feel something. You have to do something. You can't just go... You have to be like, blah, da, 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 you know, and if you aren't feeling that, that you have to blah, da, da, along with this stuff, then just go play, make a bridge or something. Well, not to your song. I mean, become an engineer. You know, if you're looking at it like I have to construct it with these blocks, but the blocks don't. It's like when kids make Legos, man, they make a tower. It's like a tower to them. It isn't like seven, seven blocks high, six width red, 20 percent red blocks achieved. That don't think of your music like 20% red blocks achieve, man. You could take some static, record it, slow it down 500 times, chop it into bits, and that's your drum track, man. Like, you can do whatever you want, and that you don't get that in 2023, bro. Our broette, the broettes know what's up. 
Whatever I say is the truth because I'm some white guy in a room holding a dusty guitar, waving it at you, insisting that it is.